This is Karen with NewClevelandRadio.net, and it's time for Let's Talk Life with Alicia. And I really need to talk about life today. (laughs) It's in the universe, I'm telling you. There's a lot of energy from that full moon a couple days ago. Well, I'll I'll tell you, it's been crazy around my house. Um, I have two moody men that I'm living with. And um, I'm so glad that the door to the office is closed. And we can have just girl talk now. (laughs) Girl talk is always good. (laughs) Yes, absolutely. So you said that you wanted to talk about self-care. What prompted you that we all need this right now? I think that's just everybody that I've been talking to, whether it's my patients, friends, um, it's this, it seems like it's a time of transition. And then also the weather's changing, fall transformations. There's a lot going on. <laughs> um, but besides the political arena and also with COVID, um, it's just, we're in a very big flux right now. And I think um, that the energy, the vibrations of the universe are definitely hitting everybody all at one time. Well, I I know for myself, you know, every day when I wake up, um, I prepare to go for a walk and that walk is the best thing that I can do because I'm with nature, okay? Um, So I'm not listening to the news. In fact, I listen to music on Spotify And I make sure it's upbeat music um, so that, number one, I walk and beat with it. But also, it can take me back, you know, to good memories, okay? It's not giving me today memories. But I find as soon as I walk into the house, um, you know, work calls. And so I'm back at my computer. Um, I get text messages from all my political friends on both sides of the aisle. Um, I have friends out in California who are suffering with the fires. So I get pictures of red sky and darkness out there. And all of a sudden I feel like I'm depleted. I don't even know what to tell other people. So when you're faced with this as a therapist, it's got to be even more difficult at the end of the day. It seems like my days are never ending, to be honest. Um, my, my days turn into nights, turn into the middle of the night, turn into the morning. Um, I, by nature, put everybody wants, needs, and everything before my own. Um, and of late, I've really had to take a step back and kind of unplug a little bit. We talked about that from a different podcast where Isolation kind of put things in perspective. Um, I no longer feel guilty about saying I need five minutes, um, sometimes 10, (laughs) if I can get that. Uh, But really self-care is even more than just the five or 10 minutes. Um, And I'm really crappy about it. I'm horrible at (laughs) self-care. I, you know, I I preach it, I talk about it. And then I can't, no, I shouldn't say I can't. I can do anything I really put my mind to. I choose not to, I guess, is the best way to put it, because I'm running around like a chicken with my head cut off. And that's, but that's me. And that's where I get my energy from. Um, But that doesn't work for everybody. And then there's this thing called burnout, (laughs) where um, you talk about when you're you're listening to Spotify and you're going for walks and you're eliciting those happy memories. I have my playlist on YouTube and where songs that used to make me happy, I'm bursting into tears. Um, and those are happy memories. Uh, and I'm sitting here going, there's something seriously wrong with me. And no, I'm tired. I'm depleted. I have nothing else to give. Um, And I don't have a choice but not to give because I have two little humans who depend on me. Right. 
And so it's, it really starts to put things in perspective of this whole, I'm in the middle of bawling my eyes out and, <laughs> and where do I get my energy from? Um, you know, I, I've taken two very short vacations. I'm very lucky that I have friends who um, housed me for a week for a couple weekends um, up north. Uh, I, I get, I'm a Scorpio, so, but I get my energy from water. I get my peace from being by water. Okay. And even going away for a day and a half was like icky at first. Um, and I was looking forward to it and I, and I, and I got there and I was settled and it was great. And I came home and I was refreshed. And then the second time I got a speeding ticket. Um, oh my. <laughs> But I mean, here's the thing, and I wasn't even in the Camaro, I was in my Jeep. I, I'm sitting there like, I'm in the zone, I'm in my own head, trying to get perspective or a race or whatever. And yeah, I got a lead foot, not gonna lie. And I learned, you know, the Jeep kind of not at full limits, but <laughs> <laughs> and a very nice police officer who did not take my license that day. <laughs> um, but then it also really put in perspective of that it's kind of a metaphor for my life. I literally go Mach 5, 10, whatever, right. all the time to, to get there. So now I'm thinking I'm rushing to relax. That should be like a number one indicator that I'm a little burnt out. Um, it's, I don't know, it, Michigan, like it's Michigan gray today. It's, it's not happiness. Right. Um, yeah. And woke up and was just like, I need to take time. Wednesdays are my day off. And now I had two patients who were like, I have to come in. And I'm like, it's not an emergency. And this is my day off. And before I would have been like, okay, I'll, I'll figure it out. My <laughs> <laughs> my favorite words. My favorite words are I'll figure it out and I will figure it out. Um, but I needed that time to be with my kids, help with, uh, with, uh, you know, school or just be, um, I do Pilates twice a week, um, when there's not holidays and things for my back. I, I used to look at it like, Oh, that was my escape. Well, in some ways it still is my escape because I can't answer my phone and the world will continue without me plugging in or mm -hmm. the half hour of getting my nails done every other week. But is that really self-care or is that grooming or that survival? And it's taking, like doing something that I enjoy. Now, granted, I do enjoy Pilates, so I don't, <laughs> but it's not, it's not enough. It's not enough time. And it's it's kind of hard to say no well you come from an environment similar to mine that saying no means that you're going to miss out on something and so we're going to say i'll figure it out or yes i'll do it because we don't want to miss out on whatever that is whether it's time with your kids time to go get your nails done and be trying to, you know, text somebody while you're having them done. I know we do those things. <laughs> um, but we also come from an era where taking time for ourselves as women was frowned on. It was being, we were being selfish. Mm -hmm. And we have to realize that if we don't take time for ourselves, everybody else is going to suffer. Your patients are going to suffer, your kids. Um, you'll get into more disagreements with people. And that's what I see myself going through. You know, when you talk about Pilates used to be a place where you would go and relax because you enjoyed it, okay? I've made sure that on my walk, I am getting what I need out of that walk. It may evaporate as soon as I walk into the house, but right. I at least know for that half hour, 45 minutes and I'm out there walking, I'm not thinking about what I have to do the rest of the day. I'm thinking about listening to the birds, 
seeing that there's muddy areas that I have to, you know, walk around, looking for neighbors to say hello to, um, just being me. Because sometimes when you walk into the house or walk into your office, you're not so much me, we're more of whoever we're around. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think there are definitely people that are who are like that. Um, there, there's a duality. There's to everybody. Um, I, I've I've noticed that on my my Facebook page that I think if my patients saw, I don't think they would be surprised at some of the memes that I post. But they, I, you know, my my uh, my my professional page is filled with information and things to inspire. My personal page is like, you know, the nitty gritty raw Alicia. Um, and I think that, yeah, I wear many hats. I'm still genuine and authentic in, in my interaction with people. I don't know how else to be. I guess it's the more reserved side of me, um, which also gets tiring. And because it's like, I have to put it together. I think that there is a difference between men and women because men have, society has given them permission to um, go play golf or to go having a poker night or, you know, go, going to have a guy's night out. Um, I think that if I were in a committed relationship, a partnership, you know, I get to have my playtime when my kids are gone. Uh, but I got to tell you something, the still the guilt and the responsibility is still in my head. I don't necessarily think men have that. Um, being the primary breadwinner, knowing that like, yeah, it all falls on my shoulders. Uh, the kids and I had a little, uh, I call it a come to Jesus meeting, but we literally cleaned out the house and was like, and there are chores every single day because mama can't do it by herself. I just, I sure can't. I mean, I could, but they're not going to have, <laughs> dinner's not going to be at an earlier time. Or when you go to bed, you're going to hear the vacuum. I can't go out and play with you. I can't go and help you do that because I'm going to be busy cleaning up the house. And, but that is actually part of my self-care now is making sure that all the chores are done and that we all do them. And it takes all of 20 minutes, um, but we have to do it every day. And they, they're like, we just vacuumed. I'm like, no, you vacuumed upstairs. We did not vacuum downstairs. <laughs> Today's another day, Scarlett. And, uh, but you know what? At 11 o'clock at night, when I'm sitting there watching my stupid TV shows, I'm able to gain perspective and sometimes of just taking that deep breath and letting it go um, and truly letting it go. Uh, my, I practice meditation every day and uh, I suck at it. I've sucked at meditation since I took a meditation class and graduate in, in, in graduate school. Um, and I will sit there and I will walk my kids through meditation and they're all into it. Like we burn sage, we're, we're totally present in the moment and I'm sitting here going like and return to breath and Alicia it is now 9 15 and they have to be in bed at 9 30 it's going through my head and I'm going and take a deep breath and you know let your body relax and I'm going like this is so not meditation for me this is meditation for them um and then I come up like come downstairs after they're in bed and truly of like, well, what is the self-care aspect to it? Because I had come back to, well, I didn't really meditate. No, I didn't. I led my kids through meditation. So now I, I've given myself permission to meditate. Does it clear my head? Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. Does it bring up a whole bunch of other crap that I have to deal with? Yes. But that's also part of self-care. I have this great like uh, storage unit, I call it, in my head. I'm just gonna put it, I'll deal with this later. I'm just gonna put it here. 
And uh, my storage unit is very cluttered, like my house used to be very cluttered. I, and I just store it because I don't want to deal with it. I mean, if, it's, if this was not like the prototype for Gone with the Wind, I don't know what it, <laughs> Scarlett and I are like, you know, buddies here. I'll just deal with it another day until it's, you know, in the deep, dark three o'clock in the morning and my head won't turn off. And really having to take a step back and going like, yeah, that was an issue from the past that I've dealt with, but this is a different aspect I haven't dealt with. Um, I probably should deal with it because it's going to keep coming up. Right. You know, it, it's, it's like that trap tear that like all the pus is there, but like if pus yep. comes up with the trap tear is still there. Yeah. Yep. And until you yank the sucker, it's not going to heal, um, which I know is a really disgusting um, <laughs> analogy, but it's kind of like, but I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of the visual is right still there. there. Yeah. And it grows back. And you're going to have to deal with it in a different, might be in a different spot, might not be as core, who knows. But I mean, we all have issues and I think that's the part of self-care. And that's the part also for men or women. It's not selfish to make yourself healthy, to take right. that time so you can come back and be refreshed. You know, you, I'm Dr. Minlin when I walk in my door. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm still Alicia, but I'm not viewed as Alicia. I'm viewed as a doctor. Right. I, I come home and I'm mom or I walk into mom and dad's house and I could be teenager Alicia, doctor, who knows? I, but I'm the kid. Right. You know, I have, I've been getting a massage because of my, I have a ruptured disc and I've not clearly been taking as good a care of myself. And, uh, our massage therapist and, and he's a good family friend and Eugene's talking and, and you're, t I don't know, he, something said in my, and my daughter, Bailey looks right at him. She goes, well, there's a feelings doctor right here pointing to me and I'm sitting here. Going, <laughs> well, you talk about it. You can talk about it with mom. And I'm sitting here like, now it's funny because my dad's on the couch. So here's my dad. So I'm the daughter, mom because my daughter is sitting on the couch and I just really want to be a blob of nothing right? <laughs> to yeah. work out the kink, which, you know, I just don't talk during massage, which is odd, but um, cause I'm just, you know, getting all the kinks out. Right. So exactly. Because I do, I hold energy in my body. Um, and it's released and it was great. And Eugene was fine. And, but it's amazing even how my kids see me because it's like, oh, well, there, <laughs> but again, oh, there's a problem. Mom will fix it because that's what I do. I will fix the problem because that's, that's my job as their mom. Um, but I've also pretty much when I've told them, like, I'm burnt out, I will say mom is having a bad day or mom has a headache or whatever, because sometimes they do have migraines and really setting the limit of like, this is not how this is playing out today. That's part of self care. Cause I'm being honest and I'm just like, I just, I have nothing to give and I don't feel guilty. Anymore. And, and that's a good lesson, not only for your kids, but for your patients, for your friends and your family. Um, you know, because my son is on the spectrum when he was younger, I always felt like I had to be there to resolve everything. Mm -hmm. um, my husband's also on the spectrum, so he doesn't always see it, okay? And so I was always jumping in and jumping in to the point that I wasn't letting my son resolve his own issues. Yes. But I was overwhelmed with them. Um, until one day, I don't even know what happened, but I just said, I can't do this all the time. And the question was asked to me, what does that mean? And I couldn't explain it other than it wasn't that I wasn't going to ever help again, but I just knew that I could not be on demand 24 seven that I had allowed myself to be. And recently now my son is, and a grown adult, so he's not like your two little ones. And, you know, I'm not comparing that, but we do have to get to a point where we can have to say, 
you know what, you are old enough to understand this. And in order for me to be the mom that you want me to be, and I want to be, I need this time. And I wish I had done that earlier, but I do it now. And I do it to my husband. I'll even say to him, now's not the time to even talk to me. Right. And he'll look at me like, oh, and he'll start asking, do you have a headache? Is your knee hurting you? Um, <laughs> did, did somebody upset you? And it really is, I'm, I'm overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. I'm overwhelmed. I just need me time. Sure. You know, I, I think, it, yeah, and then that can look at, like meditating, going for walks, being with friends. Um, it, it, it's whatever is going to get you to take care of you. Absolutely. Um, now, I don't do it. I do it more often now than before. Um, but I, you've called me like I'm superwoman. Like, it's just, I, I don't, I, I don't ever quit. I am literally the energizer bunny. And I just don't quit until, well, my body starts saying, um, Alicia, time out. Um, and then, but I can't, I get distracted because, you know, they little ADHD bunny in my head. And so like a, a friend of mine whose life is sucking right now and I'm, and it shouldn't be. And we have this long conversation and I'm like, okay, do yourself a favor. Take your wife on a date. I can, I have a little child, take your wife on a date. What does that, what does that mean? Okay. That means you're having a picnic in your living room, you know, because he's sleeping. So you have a date night in. it doesn't have to be out, but you're talking about connectedness. Right. Um, there are so many other things that we don't think of that we can be doing. Um, you know, my, my whole thing now is vacuuming and I don't even like to vacuum, but it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's the noise. I'm telling you, it's the noise where it's like, I am concentrating on vacuuming and I, because it, it's the noise, it's gonna, it, it, this does sound crazy. I get it. It evokes no memories. It evokes nothing except for like, eh, <laughs> noise. <laughs> And I think if, if I could just keep my hair dryer plugged in all the time, it's like, it's white noise. Um, and, and I don't, like I said, I, it doesn't evoke anything. And I think that's the other piece for it because I'm a sensitive person, I'm empathic. So I think that's probably part of the reason why I don't watch the news, which I will admit this to the public of, I didn't realize, I know it's hurricane season because I'm a storm watcher and I get the updates on my phone. So I like to watch the, yeah. like, you know, I didn't realize that I think it's hurricane Laura or Lara hit Texas. I had no clue, but people are talking to me and my mom's like, yeah, it's really bad there. And I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> oh. And she was like, um, there's this thing called a hurricane that like hit Louis like Louisiana and Texas. And I was right. like, Oh, when did that happen? Like two days ago? And I was like, great. And she's looking at me like, I really don't watch the news. But you know, sometimes that is a good thing. Because yes. even though you're a hurricane watcher, okay, when you hear about the devastation of it, it's not in your backyard, but you feel it because of the type of person you are. And so oh, now... Yeah. You're worrying about all those poor people down there. How are they getting through with no electricity, no food? And you, you take it on your shoulders. Um, oh, no question. I called two people that I know who are therapists in Texas. And I was like, so the first responders and trauma work. And, and they're like, no, we're good. And I was like, are you sure? Like, <laughs> We tell you know, honestly, this pandemic has, has been wonderful because the insurance now covers telehealth. So it's like I don't have to actually physically go there, but I can open up from this time to this time, and I could do crisis therapy or crisis counseling if need be in Texas. And she's like, "No, we're good, Alicia." <laughs> so there's that drawback. Um, you know, the, the politics of things. I I just scroll past it. I can't, I can't engage in it, um, which is probably for the first time ever where I'm like, oh, I'm going to put my, I, I'm not an ostrich. I'm never one to put my head in the sand. 
I know what the issues are. I don't, I don't want to hear it. I don't, um, ignorance is bliss right now because I, people who are coming to me with their own stuff who are being affected politically, I'm working trying to, on their self-care program, on how they can unplug. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I, I kind of did the same thing I think we talked about before about COVID. Right. Until someone can give me something concrete, I really, I'm going to live my life for the best that I can with my family and do what I think is best for us. And if people don't like it, that's just really too bad. But yeah, it's scary and everything else. Listen, the world is a scary place, which I think also self-care gets messed up with that as well. Um, and I think that, which is weird because we're using media. <laughs> Hi, let's like, here's to the masses. Yeah. Um, so, but social media has become a great way to network, but we've lost sight of that. It's, it's a great way to get information out, but is it correct? Is it not? I don't know. You can fact check half the things I've said and yes, they are all true, but you know, someone's going to say, oh no, it was actually this day, not two days after the hurricane. And oh, okay, well now I'm wrong. Um, it's created a lot of issues. And so I used to use Facebook to escape. Now I just post on my personal page, uh, ridiculous memes and that are offensive pretty much to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I give zero, zero, zero cares. Put well, in the F and then fill that one out. <laughs> but that's another form of self care. Yes. Think about it. Okay. Um, you know, the first time somebody talked to me about self-care wasn't until my mother got ill and I was living in her apartment. Yeah. And uh, my very good friend, Dennis, called me one day and he said, what are you doing for yourself? And I said, well, nothing. You know, it's not about me. It's about my mom. And he goes, it's also about you. And I started getting very angry with him. It was like, don't you understand? My mom, you know, she's blind. She doesn't know she's blind. She's in bed. She doesn't realize that she's really in bed all the time. And she doesn't know she's dying and we're not supposed to tell her. So it's about mom. And he said, I'm coming over. And he came over to the apartment and he said to me, I want you to go into the bathroom and I want you to cry. And I looked at him like he was crazy. I didn't feel like crying. And he goes, just go in there. I'll listen for your mom. If we really need you, I'll get you. So to appease him, I went into the bathroom. And as soon as I walked in there, the tears just started rolling down my face. Then I realized I was sobbing, so I had to turn the water on so he wouldn't hear me sobbing. Um, but when I came out, I was refreshed. Mm -hmm. And... I said to him, how can I feel this good? I was just in there sobbing and crying. And he goes, because you let it out. Right. And it was from that point on that I was taking, I mean, not probably as much as I should have, but I was taking time during the day to take care of me because I was getting angry. I was getting angry at my brother who would sit in the living room all day long. He was there if I needed him, but I never asked him. But I was mad at him because he wasn't helping. Um, and I realized that was my problem. So self-care doesn't necessarily mean that we have to go to the spa. No. Or we get to sit around and eat bonbons all day. Um, although, boy, this, that sounds like a fun time. It but it means connecting with ourselves. Oh, absolutely. I... I think I, I've mentioned this twice now in my adulthood where I looked in the mirror and I didn't recognize who I was. And, uh, and both times inspired me to write. So people don't know this, but I do like to write for fun. Um, but I also, and it's sometimes it's very dark and gloomy. <laughs> um, and 
lots of metaphors, uh, but I, it, it happened probably a couple weeks ago where I, like my soul was tired, my soul was hurt. And I was look it's a reflection back. And it wasn't as scary, like it was um, about six years ago, seven years ago now when this happened. But I remember getting out of the shower and where I actually stood in the mirror and actually looked at myself. And I was, and you know, it, it was the, at first it was the real critical eye, the, oh my God, you look all of 43. Oh my God, this, this, and that. <laughs> and people will tell me all the time, like, you don't look 43. And I don't feel 43. We know I'm pretty much like a 21 year old. And then at times I'm like an adolescent boy inside who's just like, oh, you're farting and I'm laughing because I think it's hysterical. I don't, but I'm literally looking in the mirror of going like, you're, t it wasn't old. It was, you're tired. And the spark, the sparkle, so to speak, was just like, gone and I couldn't access it. Usually I'll snap out of it and I'll go, okay, like now you're just being dramatic, Alicia. <laughs> like <laughs> brush your hair, brush your teeth, blow dry your hair and, and, and move on. And I I couldn't. I was really paralyzed. And then I I don't remember. It was really weird because it was like I don't remember brushing my hair. And I'm wrapped in my towel and I just started writing. And all of this stuff came out and I was like oh that's like actually pretty poetic for a first draft um and I shared it with a couple people and they were like oh this is about your relationship I was like no this is uh, this is, was inspired by me looking at me I the, the soul that I know isn't there like it's there I just can't access it and it's just this vacant stare and I was, I had caught myself staring at myself, but not in a critical way, in a, who is, the reflection back just isn't matching. Um, and, and I think that if you can find, not everybody is creative, or they are creative, but they have that negative critic in their head. Um, I love the arts. Now, granted, I'm not going to go choreograph a ballet and get all my feelings out um that would be an interesting ballet for sure but it, it you know what i I've, I've written i've written letters i've which you know we we have a right my, my uh she is my spirit animal like <laughs> what she really is like I, that's what i want to be when i grow up like <laughs> i think we all want to be just like janet yes i think yes. so uh, but like writing letter, like I, I wrote a letter to my young self and, and I was, you talk about the critical mother, my God, I had every like wrong, everything I don't believe in about motherhood, everything. And I was like, wow. And my mom is tough on me. My mom is a tough mom. She's not that tough. Like I was Re like this letter and it was like oh my god if I ever like I would never write this to my daughter but oh yeah no it was not pretty and I burnt it I literally I burnt it. I felt much better <laughs> it was great um I, I wrote um a letter to the person who I wanted to be I, you know I, and then I, but then I started writing like my creative stuff um thank God we don't have enough paints here so I can start painting canvases because then it would be the gallery of Midland and that would just, because once it comes out with me, it, it comes out and it can be almost like in a manic uh, way because I'll do days of it. So we, so I don't do that, <laughs> but I, I do do it with writing, but I, I think for anyone of, of, who doesn't think that they're creative it, it's not for to sell for the masses um i write stupid songs too uh i write write i write pretend blogs in my head they're fantastic <laughs> I, I have my nice little fan club going on but it's it's a way though for me to laugh and it's a way for me to get it out in a constructive way and to really of that's taking care of my soul 
and you know driving really ridiculous on Woodward. But I mean, but yeah, I mean that is if, if anything like, um, which is why I love track days because you can do it legally. Yeah. Um, but getting on 696, which is an expressway here in, in uh, Detroit, Michigan, and and testing the limits to a vehicle. It's really, I hate to say, it's not about the other people and it's really not about how fast I can go. It is absolutely about how my driving abilities and me just forgetting everything. And it literally is like, I have to pay attention to what I'm doing. So I'm really living in the present moment. That and I'm kicking a lot of people's asses, but that's, but again, that's a whole race car thing in my head. Right. I mean, well, good word, not so much. Uh, I mean, but for the most part, it, it's a zone because I am completely aware of every, I have to be complete compare, like, except for the police, which I'm not very good at spotting, but like other cars and being aware and anticipating other people's um, actions, which is what I do crazy enough. That's what I do for a living. Right. Exactly. Exactly. But, but in the car, I, I'm in control. I am literally in control and I am testing my limits. I'm testing a car limit. And which, huh, again, metaphor for my life, because we all know I test boundaries. <laughs> you, you give me the rules and I will try to figure a way around them. Um, but it gives, it gives me that release. Like people who call, talk about run, runners high. Right. It, same thing from it's that adrenaline I just I don't run unless someone's chasing me <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't run either I walk well let me ask you you know when a patient comes in and they're going through what you're going through okay mm -hmm. um and you try to tell them that they need to do more self-care and as most of us would say is, well, I don't have time like you did. Okay. Right. Um, because when I get up in the morning, I, I have to do X, Y, and Z, and then somebody's waiting for me. And then I have a job and whatever it is, we have this whole scenario of what we think we need to do. And yet you as a therapist are sitting there going halt, you know, um, you still need to take t time for yourself. How do you get somebody to begin that journey? Well, one is that I never say like, this is what you need to do. Okay. That, there's very, so that's, that's rule number one in therapy. <laughs> what, one num rule number one in therapy with Alicia is, we, Alicia doesn't tell them what to do unless they're being really, really dumb. And they're really making really poor choices. And I will use the word dumb with them and go, whoa, time out. Like, I will say, what is it that you enjoy? If you had, if you had a, a, a magic wand, or if I had a crystal ball, what is it that you enjoy? Okay. And so then the person will tell me. So race cars, we'll use that. I really like cars. Okay. So what's stopping you from racing your car? And they can give me the whole list of things. Okay. So you don't, you can't uh, get the tires you want. You don't have enough money to go for track days. You don't have this. Okay. What can you do that gives you enjoyment out of your life that's car related? And they can list, you know, X, Y, and Z. For, for me, it's there's a, a car group we belong to, and we sit there and we watch cars go by on Woodward. And I'll tell you, and there are some amazing cars. And then there are some really disgusting ones. I'm like, how is that even legal to be on the road? But whatever. And you know what? For an hour, for two hours, with my kids, without my kids, it just, and brings back really great memories of childhood. Um, brings back fantastic memories of a very important relationship of mine. And I'm at peace. Because it's not, and yeah, am I driving? No, then I get the itch and I'm like, oh, okay. and I go, no, can't do that. Kids are in the car. Or I don't have the, I, I, the Jeep is not a race car. <laughs> um, but it's, it's giving off this, not the same high, 
but it's taking me to a place where I am calm. It's kind of like when people say, oh, what's your safe space? Yes. Where's your calm thing? And it's like, well, mine's an igloo, except for the fact I hate to be cold. I I love penguins, but I hate to be cold. Um, I I don't like snow. (laughs) And ice is not exactly that thrilling in that capacity. Um, So I used to hate that and visualize yourself being in there. Now, yes, visualization can definitely for a hot minute. But at the same time, it's like going and doing. We know that that gets us out of depression. We know that that can actually calm some anxiety of doing something that we enjoy. It, it, It activates a different part of the brain. And so, you know what? Washing your car. I know this sounds really crazy, but I... I have a patient who's a car nut. She really is. And she can't afford a race car. She has her dream. She has like four dream cars, which they're very, I got to, I got to get her credit. If you're going to go big, I would have those four cars. (laughs) Um, And and she's got her mommy mobile as she calls it. And she washes and waxes it like once a week. And that's her bliss. I, you know, I, I, I have an unlimited membership to, to our car wash by my office. And I, there is some pride in the fact of I go get my car washed almost every day, sometimes twice a day. Because um, I paid for the membership and why not? But, but there's, a, there's a pride in that. Right. Uh, and we do talk about the cars, but that was also part of my self-care. Part of my goals. And... Uh, they don't have to be monetary goals. Um, but there's stuff that like, you know, you have your, your bucket list. Well, I always had the Alicia list and the Alicia list is what are the things I'm going to accomplish? And it was never a time limit. Um, but like things that were important that I don't know, they were like, they're markers. They're not even like prize things to me. So I wanted to, you know, (laughs) I wanted to own my own business. I did that, did it again. Um, I I wanted to, you know, be a doctor. So, okay, so now I'm a doctor. So I got my master's, I got my doctor. And I'm like, I wanted to be a mom, got that. And I I wanted to own my own house, I got that. So what was next? Well, I wanted a Jeep since I was five years old. Okay, so I was going to get it. I figure out a way to get it. Well, the sapphire is sitting in my garage. <laughs> you know, I wanted I I wanted a sports car, my own sports car since I don't know, probably I could say car. So one and a half maybe. I, I've always loved just the art of racing, the art of sports cars. I was going to always own one. Not necessarily a Camaro, but I love my Camaro. Vixen is like absolutely amazing. It's a status thing, but it's n- but it's not a status thing in the sense of it's something that I'm able to do and I've wanted to do. Well, now I've had it. I love them both dearly, um, and, and, and I'm very proud of myself that yep, that was a checklist. Um, I also want like a lake house, a boat, a jet skis. And if it takes me till I'm 85 years old on a lake going around in a jet ski, I'll be doing that. Um, but if I don't, it's not like I've failed. It's just, those are some of the stuff that this, my self care, my escapism, my setting goals. And I think that's also part of self care for, for me, you know, I, my weight loss journey was really about getting healthy. So I didn't have to have surgery. And then it became like the the game of life, so to speak, of like the number game. And then it became like, well, I want to be this size. Well, I will never be a size four. I have these things called hips. They ain't not going away. And even if I had a hip replacement, they're still not going away. So it became about like, well, I can wear this clothes. I can do this. Um, That was all part of self-care. Um, because it was just, it was about in my own head, what was making me feel good or relaxed, but the best self-care that I have, to be honest, 
is watching my kids watch the dumbest shows on the planet. And I will say they are so dumb and they, they binge watch it. And, and, and I will sit there and I'll be like, oh my God, like um, there's this camp that my daughter actually wants to go to. That's a, like a sleepover camp. And it's like, it's called Kiki Waka or something. And it's like, Kiki Waka, Kiki Waka. I, I hear this. <laughs> I go to bed hearing this song. That is the best self-care is sitting on the couch with them, my, one on my right, one on my left. And we're sitting there and I'm literally watching this with them and seeing them like giggle. And then they're like, they're talking about the episodes and I'm absolutely in the moment with them. And the theme song is absolutely making me crazy. But, <laughs> but, and then they're singing it and I'm like, <laughs> you know, like, yay, it's like Paw Patrol. Any parent who's watched Paw Patrol knows that that song will stay in your head for forever. But that's the best self-care for me, is being able to just breathe with my kids. Um, and that's not being a mom at that point in time. We're just three little bumps on the log and watching TV. And then they're like, oh, can I have a chocolate? And I'm like, sure. And they're like, do we have to eat it at the table? And I was like, no. But if you get it on the couch, we have to get you couches. So, no. <laughs> um, you know, it, 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 it's those kind of things. They're trying to just enjoy the moment, I guess, and being in the moment. So. And so we all can do different things is what you're saying for that self care. Um, when I was working in corporate America, I had a manager who every Friday, she would go around the room with all of us and, you know, we had to either name our favorite food, you know, whatever. She came up with something and I didn't really have any favorite foods. Number one, I had just lost a lot of weight. I was being careful what I was eating and food was just something that I knew I had to do eat because it was nur nurturing. But other than that, you know, I couldn't tell you that, oh, I was salivating over lobster tail because at that point I wasn't. So she would get angry. Well, you've got to come up with something. The following week, she wanted us to talk about what our favorite song was. You know, and so I came up with something from my generation, which none of them understood. But I finally went to her one day and I said, when you push somebody to say what their favorite of something is, you're asking them to dig deep. This is not a place for us to dig deep. And she looked at me and she goes, well, it's just for the fun of it. I said, but it's no fun for me. And she goes, oh, so I know what we're going to do next week. You don't have to come to the team meeting. But actually that was the best thing for me because I finally started to realize that what music I liked or what movie I liked or, but I didn't have to be on the spot about it. That to me was my self care. I could choose what I wanted to like when I wanted to like it. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that your listeners are getting this because, um, you know, at one time I thought self care meant, you know, I had to go for a day spa. Um, I had to find Prince Charming who would, you know, bedazzle me with jewels. Um, I found my Prince Charming, but no bedazzling jewels. Um, I thought I had to, you know, have the most perfect family. And I'm glad I don't have a perfect family because they're the most interesting people in my life. So I'm glad that we did this today because it's making me feel like, you know what, I'm human. Well, I think that's part of it is self-care is realizing that we're human and like, I'm a bad um, meditator. I'm bad at self-care. I am really, really bad sometimes at putting on makeup. I'm really, really bad at making coffee at times. I'm really, really bad at a whole bunch of stuff, but you know what? Like I'm really good about other things. And I think it's about being kind to yourself and kind to I'm not necessarily those around you, but I think if you are good to yourself, you can then be good to others. And that honestly, like 
what we're seeing about like, oh, that person's really put together. I'm pretty much sure that that person inside is not put together. And that it's pretty much that it's okay. It's okay to unplug. It's giving yourself permission. And really honestly, um, the best I've ever heard someone tell me is somebody else's opinion is really none of my business. I love it. And you know, it's really true. What matters is what you think and what you feel. And if you're burnt out, then do something that's going to make you feel like you again. And so it could be honestly just putting on lip gloss. It could be because of quarantine getting dressed. It, you know, a, a new hairstyle, a different color, doing something daring or whatever. It really doesn't matter and it's not a checklist. It's what comes from inside and makes you feel whole. I love it. So next, next time we will come up with another subject that we can talk about because this is about talking life with Alicia. Thank it you. is. And please, people, please contact us. Let us know what you want to hear us talk about or ramble or whatever. Um, cause I gotta tell you, my head is a hamster wheel and I can come up with some stuff, but <laughs> I want it to be beneficial to everybody else. And so please contact us. We look forward to hearing from everybody. Be safe. Have a great day and we'll see you all soon. Bye. Bye.